I'm Dick Meister from Pure Storage, and I'm really happy to be here. One of the first times I heard about Pure Storage was from a Tech Field Day video, I think, in 2012. Afterwards, I became really interested in the company, and like soon after, I joined Pure Storage. So thank you for this venue. Um, I'm here today to talk about CloudSnap in uh, a bit more detail. Um, Kunal already introduced what CloudSnap is, but I want to like catch up a bit on that. So what we, uh, uh, CloudSnap is our snapshotting offloading system that can offload snapshots from the flash array to the cloud. Let's say we have here our flash array. Our customers run their like, mission critical uh, um, applications on it, like databases, virtual machines, and they want to uh, have an offsite copy of the data in term um, anything happens, they want to restore it later. We can take a snapshot on the flash array and move it to the cloud and restore it back to the same flash array or to any other flash array. The system is built in natively into the pure storage system, which I think is um, of great advantage, and I will uh, talk about later in this talk why we think this has um, advantages. The advantages result in an efficient system and an easy-to-use system, and I will talk about both. Afterwards, I will show you a short a demo of our graphical user interface. The, um, showing Cloud Snap and how it works, and I will show uh, Pure One our like cloud-based fleet management site. Afterwards, I will dig in a couple of technical details and explain why Cloud Snap is built with the cloud in mind, and uh, how it deals with like key aspects of AWS S3. Afterwards, I will hand over to my colleague Naveen. He will talk about Cloud Block Store. Cloud Snap is based on our like. A snap plotting system of the flash array itself, and we are really proud of the snap plotting system. You can take uh, snapshots of any volume at any given time. You can restore any snapshot back to a volume at any given time. They are um, instantaneous, the restore and the snapshot taking. They are like extremely space efficient, and they build the foundation for literally everything we do in our data protection system. So async replication is built deeply integrated into the snap routing system. Active cluster or synchronous replication system is built on our snap routing system. And in, um, to some extent also Cloud Snap and SnapDNFS are built uh, based on this foundation. One thing that our snap routing system allows us is when you have two different snapshots in our array, we really quickly can calculate any differences between these snapshots and see where overwrites have happened in between. And this is a feature we are using for our um, for Cloud Snap too. Um, CloudSnap is every native. It's built into the purity system itself. And I think this is really one of the key advantages of providing um, an efficient system. It, is, um, it means it's less complex for our customers. They don't need any additional hardware or any additional software licenses. CloudSnap comes uh, with our normal purity software, and um, it's, um, easy, it's easily available. It's deeply integrated into our purity snap routing system. And why this matters, I will talk about later in an example. It also reduces the impact on the application environment for our customers. And um, this is um, explained in more detail in this picture. Here we have like a traditional prototypical backup um, setup. I'm not saying that any backup is set up this way, but like it's a prototypical standard setup that we can imagine here. And on the right side, we have CloudSnap. On the full backup side, we have our flash array. We have our host that doing the application I/O. This is where the customer databases run, and usually you have like extra backup hardware and um, extra backup software. When the backup wants to do um, a backup, they might take a snapshot. Now they have to read all the data from the flash array. Then they will do a compression again. They will do some kind of diffing again um, on the backup hardware itself, and then they move it to the uh, backup target, let's say an NFS server, tape, or the cloud. Before they do this, they have to, again, redo the compression. The cloud snap setup is much, much simpler. We don't have any extra hardware. We have still the application hosts doing their I.O. When uh, we offload a snapshot, we take a snapshot local on the flash array. We use our snapshot technology to quickly find all the differences between the last snapshot that's been offloaded and the current snapshots that we want to offload. Now we only read the data that has changed in the meantime. We don't have to touch any other data that has not been touched since the last snapshot. 
then we read the data that is already in compressed form on our SSDs, keep them in the compressed form, and store them in the compressed form on the cloud. This avoids like a really expensive decompression, recompression cycle, um, uh, resulting in more efficient. Because we never touch the host I.O. system, iSCSI fiber channel, it, this um, setup, this Arbonator setup, has less impact on the applications that run on the flash array, because everything is done more efficient and on a side channel. The CloudSnap is every native also provides us with like an easy to use system. If you want to, you can call it cloud-like. Simplicity is really important for us at Pure Storage. Any feature, including CloudSnap, you can configure your, uh, using our like web graphical user interface, our CLI interface, and for automation, everything is available in a REST interface. Pure is really API first. Everything you want to do, you can do via REST too. CloudSnap comes with automated scheduling of snapshots. You can uh, say, I want to take a snapshot every four hours and offload it to the cloud. Yeah? Um, the consistent API uh, was referenced uh, for both <coughs> on-prem and in the cloud uh, for developers to, to reference. Is that uh, a pure storage uh, generated API? Uh, or is it, um, is it that y'all focused on like a, the S3 API standard or whatnot? Um, it's like a pure storage API that looks really similar, like the, the CloudSnap API looks really similar to the local snapshotting API. Okay. This is where consistency comes in in one extent. And, and there's a, a virtual appliance running uh, in the public cloud that's serving up that API? Absolutely not. No. The one thing we were, the, the, yes. one thing that we tried with CloudSnap is that we don't need um, compute running in the cloud for this. Everything is managed and maintained by the array itself yep. using like the S3 REST API. What um, is something like a virtual appliance, if you want to call it this way, is cloud block storage, as uh, Naveen will talk about in more detail later. This is software that runs in the cloud. CloudSnap, um, you don't have, need CPU, EC2 instances, anything running in the cloud. It's maintained by the flash array itself. Okay, and, and one follow-up. Yeah. Uh, if, if the by default that API is being served up from that on-prem appliance, uh, what if that in a DR situation, that's down. How do you access that API at that point? Um, and we'll talk about this a bit later. Okay. Um, I think later um, your question will be answered. If it's not answered, please come back to me. Okay, thank you. Um, so ease of use, like the, the REST interface, automatic scheduling, automated retention management. So you can configure when the snapshot that you took and offload it to the cloud, when the snapshot is no longer needed. You configure, for example, I want to take a snapshot every four hours and offload it, and I want these snapshots for one week, and afterwards I want to keep one snapshot per day for another 14 days, something like this. And all these snapshots, um, these are all the volume level? These are volume level snapshots. Okay, so if you wanted to restore, uh, say, a virtual machine that had multiple volumes, does it understand that these volumes are all, are all part of the same virtual machine, or is it more just managing the retention at the, at the individual volume level? It maintains the retention at the individual volume level. Okay. Um, our like, VVOL integration is really something that helps in like, a case you described, because in our VVOL integration, as you might know, mm -hmm. any uh, volume is uh, on a distinct set of, any virtual machine is on a distinct set of volumes. Okay. But like CloudSnap in between is what we call like, portable snapshots, portable volumes. It, everything is on a volume level. Okay. So like an application consistent snapshot across multiple volumes, that would be something that's supported by? A, a crash consistent snapshot over multiple volumes. Mm -hmm. um, app consistency is some, like, needed for like parts of our customers, and part of customers crash consistency is sufficient. At this point, for app consistent snapshots, um, we, um, you need like an external backup software. Okay. Um, and at Cloud Field Day 5, there are a lot of our pure storage partners that provide you with this ability, like Veeam would just talk before us. Right, okay, so you so, can use those in tandem. Yeah, so like today we have, we have integration with like a lot of backup partners that we have for local snapshots. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking and kind of evaluating you know, how we can integrate the same cloud snap functionality to your point. If you want to do it at an app level, where you want it to be VM aware or app aware, can we do that? As Dirk pointed out, you know, with VVOLs, it starts becoming a little bit simpler, the portability thing, because every VM is really four or five VVOLs in your right. thing. So you can start operating at a more at a VM granularity. And we have customers doing that kind of, a, addressing that kind of use case. But 
This is not right now from an app consistency perspective. It needs integration with like a backup software, which we're working on. We can do um, consistency across volumes in the crash consistent sense. We call that protection groups. So you can sort of bundle uh, okay. volumes together, sure. and then right, those right. will yep. be point in time consistent. Right. Okay, and then being able to recover those volumes to a cloud target, um, you're obviously moving the data up there. If you want to rehydrate or create those volumes up there, yeah. You would so, do that. Yeah, because they're self-describing snapshots as um, Dirk said. So they're data and metadata embedded in them. So we can recover that to any flash array because it understands the format. Mm -hmm. Or we can recover it to the cloud itself with cloud blocks, too, which is really like a virtual flash array that's running in the cloud. Okay. Because it understands that format. So okay. We should be digging into that. Um, you mentioned in a previous slide that you um, target S3 frequently access data. Do you allow lifecycle policies to migrate the snapshots to Glacier? I think I will, I will, uh, I will tell the, in a later slide. Okay. Um, but um, no, no, please, I will talk ahead. about this on a later slide. Okay, that cool. Okay. Can I just uh, ask one question just while we're on the backup piece? Yep. Can you do file level restores from these snapshots? Uh, currently everything is like on a volume granularity. Okay. Um, we looked at, like, we talked with our customers a lot, and there's a lot of use case for like file level granularity for app consistent snapshots. And there's a lot of use case for something simpler, um, where like volume granularity, maybe because of default, is sufficient for our customers. So we thought this is where we, where we start. Um, on a volume level granularity, just a simpler process of loading snapshots to the cloud, restoring them. And for a subset of customers, this is what they really want. So I think it's just the slide before where you take the, the, the backup piece out. Yeah. Um, you're taking it out of the data path. But if you want this um, um, more complex uh, solution or some uh, extra functionality, then that stays there, like your Veeam integration you're talking about, but it's not in the data path. You can leverage the snapshots. Yes, you can leverage the snapshots. I think there's a use case to make to, in the future, use something like CloudSnap as like a data movement for existing backup application and backup software. And um, we are like discussing with partners to do that because of the efficiency of CloudSnap from a data movement perspective. So CloudSnap has like two m main use cases. Like one is as a self-contained portable snapshot system, and this is what customers use directly. And the other use case is integrated in like in the future integrated into a backup software as a data movement piece in like a bigger, more complete backup story. Yeah, I guess the feedback is from that slide before when you take backup out, you you're making it look like you're a backup provider. I wouldn't call it. Backup. No, um, but you, you're sort of saying, hey, you've got this thing, and then you don't need it anymore. And like, really, you still do for, for those backup use cases. Correct. For backup use yeah. cases, yeah. So in um, the slide, you said this is all you know, native to the array. Yeah. So what's the overheads? Because if I'm pulling all that back, the array's doing the heavy lifting. And you know, where's, the, where's the limit where I can impact my production workloads <laughs> because I'm doing 10 restores or you know, those sorts of things? It's, where's that limit? I cannot give you a percentage number of, of overhead. Um, I, you are right, there is like a trade-off. We are now doing more on the array. And I think the, um, what, when you look at this trade-off, you have, you're doing more on the array, but you are doing it in a more fundamentally more efficient way by using the snapshotting system itself. And in most use cases, the efficiency gains by being deep integrated into the software internals using the metadata outweighs the, um, the disadvantage of that you actually have to do more work on the array. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, another aspect of ESOS use is, is auto recovery. We really try hard to recover from any kind of network disruption, outage, failure. Like when we presented our user interface the first time to customers, they said like this is all nice and, and good, but when an offload drop failed because of a network outage, how can I resume my, my, my offloading drop? And at pure um, there is not a resume button, it will automatically resume. The pure software is designed that customers don't have to monitor the array 24 7 looking for outages, looking for, for errors. Um, it is really uh, that like, the heavy lifting should be done by the array itself. Is it intelligent enough to kind of wait and then ramp up once network con connectivity is established? Because you don't want it to start, you know. Flapping, oh, yeah. and then it tries to start up and can't, and can't, yeah. and yeah. it's sort of blasting your pipe. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so how does it handle that throttling and and? Uh, it, it will back off over time. Okay. Uh, and it like oh I like I tried it again, and at some point it will give up and alert. So let's say something is like really really stuck. Mm -hmm. Then at some point after some time it becomes like like 
Yeah, I tried it multiple times. It actually does not work. I think I need human help here. Okay. Uh, but it's not like the default case. It's the exceptional case. 